Howdy folks and welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory and I have a very special guest on the line today, Mr. Peter Berenger from goldenzeitenblog.com out of Germany. And we are going to be discussing the German gold repatriation efforts among other topics. Peter, how are you doing this morning? Doing fine, Rory. Thank you for having me and for your interest in our topic here. Well, I certainly appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. I know you're working on a book, and that's going to be uh, released in German uh, in April, and then it will be hopefully released in English later on this year. And I wanted to just jump right in and ask you about the what happened yesterday as far as there was an article that came out. I first read it on goldcore.com about the Bundesbank acquiring 120 tons of gold. And then a few hours later, you sent out a communique saying, well, that's not exactly right. And if you would kind of clear the air for us and let us know what's actually happening with the 120 tons that was supposedly repatriated yesterday. Well, what is correct is that uh, we had a, an official press release from German Bundesbank uh, the custodian of the people's gold, the German people's gold, uh, and they have their sub-custodians, as I would uh, call them, uh, at the Federal Reserve, uh, the Bank of England and the uh, Banque de France for historical reasons, also for some uh, economic historical reasons. Uh, the gold, you should know, had never been in Germany, had never ever been in Germany, wow. <laughs> it had been acquired in the 1950s and 60s uh, in New York and London uh, and had stayed there Initially for military reasons, because we had the Cold War. and uh, But since 1990, uh, there's, that reason is basically gone. Uh, and we, we that is our initiative, uh, I co-founded uh, Repatriate Our Gold. Uh, we have been fighting for four or five years now uh, to actually bring gold home physically. And this is not an easy task, I, I can tell you. But uh, we have had some successes. Uh, what Everything, everything we know about uh, the whereabouts of the German gold, tonnages, locations, uh, status, uh, or alleged status, uh, we know just because we uh, we put public pressure on Bundesbank. started in 2011, uh, and it took two years uh, of heavy lobbying to actually bring about the initial partial repatriation scheme uh, the Bundesbank announced in 2013, January of 2013. Uh, they committed themselves to bring back 700 tons uh, to Germany by en end 2020 uh, for eight years for 700 tons. Uh, we already have a little of our gold in Germany uh, after 2020, and this is the official plan. Germany would have half of its gold in Germany. Uh, the other 50% uh, are to be are to remain abroad uh, for good. Uh, Bundesbank officially says we need it there to trade in the case of a monetary crisis, which is just ridiculous. <laughs> because yes. it's, it's exactly then that you do not want to trade. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, 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 but anyway, uh, yesterday, and this is not the first release, uh, we have uh, received the official 2014 repatriation numbers. And Bundesbank, uh, not to our surprise, but to quite a few people's surprise, has officially announced uh, that they uh, brought back 120 tons in 2014, um, 85 of which from New York, the Fed, uh, some and other 45 tons from Paris. Um, so this is the official announcement we've had yesterday. And yeah. I have written an article, and it's not the first one, where I put a few question marks behind that official release. First of all, there is no estimate. Uh, there's no um, proof whatsoever that a transport from either New York or Paris has taken place at all. It would be very easy to disprove uh, us here for Bundesbank. They just would have to show us auditing records, transport records. The gold was partially melted. I'm going into that a little later. Uh, there's no record whatsoever. There's no photos, no video footage, uh, no bar lists, neither from now destroyed um, because melted down bars from New York, nor from newly cast uh, bars uh, now in Frankfurt. So that's everything is obscure here. But still, to, to start with the positive, in 2013, when Bundesbank started its repatriation, 
they only brought back 37 tons and only five tons from those 37 came from New York. Now it's 85 a year later, so that's better. And it's already, uh, it's definitely already a result from heavy criticism the Bundesbank got both from us and even from the mainstream media for only bringing back five tons in 2013. Right. So something has changed. They had to come up with a, an impressive number this year. Uh, I mean, it's relatively impressive, but the main, my main point is um, they have to prove it. But I, I'm saying relatively impressive because even at this pace, and we are now two years in the repatriation process, uh, on average, uh, Bundesbank has brought back 78 tons now in 2013 and 14. If they continue to uh, repatriate at that pace, and we don't have no guarantee for that, they would still take 30 years to repatriate all of our gold. <laughs> uh, 3, 2,200 tons are now remaining officially abroad. Wow. So, and 30 tons is definitely too long. We're already probably in the two monetary systems from now, <laughs> 30 years from now. Yeah, that's that, uh, that, that's uh, polemic now. Yeah, that's unacceptable, I would think. You know, th a 30 year timeline. I mean, the, the first question that was thrown out, you know, two years ago when everything was announced that they were going to repatriate at around 700 tons, that why is it going to take seven years? And now what you're saying is based on what's actually happened and we're looking at 30 years, which is a, you know, a six fold or a five fold increase almost. Mm -hmm. And that's wow. And well, well, part of the reason is they only want to bring back 700 tons and we want to see all of our remaining 2,200 tons abroad yeah. uh, to see them in Germany. Uh, so there's a difference in objectives. And uh, so our criticism is not only the speed, but it's also the volume. We want yeah. it all. The Bundesbank does not want to send back uh, all of the gold home. And thirdly, it's the transparency issue. As I already said, yes. we have no proof for actual transports. Uh, and then there's this very special issue, and I would like to spend a minute on the uh, remelting and recasting of those bars uh, that came from New York. Uh, officially, Bundesbank says uh, the bulk of the 85 tons uh, that allegedly came from New York in 2014 had to be melted down and recast into new bars that are allegedly LGD compliant, London Good Delivery Standard compliant. And... Uh, this is the same explanation in inverted commas that Bundesbank already gave in 2013 and which was not plausible and not credible already at the time. There was no, there is, to, in my opinion, no real reason to recast those bars uh, and especially no reason to do it in complete obscurity and secrecy uh, without any proof. <laughs> and uh, it, there really is no proof. And it would be so easy to have an ex external auditor actually at least stamp a paper, a piece of paper uh, confirming that. But they don't. Uh, to the opposite, they said, we, and this is a quote, Bundesbank says, um, we used the expertise of the Bank of International Settlements uh, <laughs> in, in Basel, Switzerland, um, to bring about either the transport or the remelting or the random sampling of those bars. Uh, they don't give a lot of details. I just had a call before we, we have our call now. I just had a call from a journalist, journalist in, in Washington, D.C., who had called um, uh, Bundesbank itself and asked, uh, why did you use have to use the expertise of the uh, BIS? And he did not even get an official explanation beyond what we had in the press release yesterday. Wow. Uh, so there's no explanation for that, and there's no reason for that. I mean, we all know, and probably a lot of uh, your listeners know, that the BIS is the central banks of central bank of central banks. Uh, they did a lot of coordination for decades uh, between central banks all over the world, also and especially in gold-related matters. Uh, so th this is suspicious, to say the least. And, it's, yes. and, and it definitely is unnecessary. There's no reason a lot of private gold trading companies uh, deliver, transport, melt down uh, gold every day uh, all over the world. And nobody ever needs the expertise of the BIS. <laughs> well, just, just the, the fact that the BIS has their hand in it, that raises a lot of questions. Just yes. that's, that's a major red flag to me right there. That's, yeah, it's the same wow. for me. But uh, basically, officially, I'm not saying that something is wrong here. Officially, from our um, uh, initiative, 
But what I'm saying is it is not plausible, it is not necessary, and please disprove us. Please, Bundesbank, disprove us, uh, show us that our doubts and that we uh, weird conspiracy theorists are wrong. It's so easy to show us a little proof. It's very easy to do very that, easy. but they don't. Yeah, <laughs> it's, and, if, and if the BIS did in fact have a hand in lending their, quote, expertise then why don't they have documentation regarding where the where the gold came from and who melted it and who recast it and who shipped it they should if, they should have all of that information readily available if the story is true at all if a transport and a melting and recasting process has taken place at all which we have no proof then there should be documentation but at this stage uh, Bundesbank always says Oh, yes, we have all the documentation. We have all the ballots. They told us that four years ago already in our very first, uh, when our initiative started out and when we were in direct contact with them, and they claimed to have all the documentation, but they would never give, give that out. And uh, this is just not right. We are the owners. Bundesbank is just a custodian. This is, this is the law here in Germany, and I'm right. sure it's the same all over the world. Uh, Bundesbank is not the official owner of, the, of these bars. Right. It belongs to the people, just like uh, like you pointed out, all over the world. It's yes. not just like what's here supposedly in Fort Knox and in the other uh, Federal Reserve system in the United States. I mean, that gold does not belong to the Federal Reserve or the United States Treasury. It belongs to the people of the United States. That is my gold, and I haven't been able to see or get any documentation the same as you in Germany, we haven't been able to see anything. We have not since 19 in the early 1950s was the last yes. audit, which is mm -hmm. ridiculous. I mean, in, in my upcoming book, I have a complete chapter, more than 100 pages um, on the international gold audit and repatriation initiatives. We are not the first one and we are not the last one. No. <laughs> we are one of the most important ones now. Yes. We're not the first one. The first one I have in my book is actually Ron Paul's campaign in 2000, starting out in 2009, uh, Audit the Fed. Obviously, you have no repatriation plan uh, problem in the US, but you have an audit problem too. You have a transparency problem, definite, yes. definitely. I mean, you mentioned the Eisenhower time uh, audit of 1953, I think. Then there was a show for you as journalists in 1974 at Fort Knox. And that was more or less it. Uh, after that, we had a few more um, so-called audits uh, I read about in the U.S. press. Uh, but it's exactly the same. Here you get uh, some information in the media from the New York Fed that everything is in order and that's it. And uh, there's no proof or evidence is ever given. That, that was the first initiative. Then we had... Uh, at the same time, when we started out, we had Venezuela. Uh, they were one of the very few countries who actually succeeded yeah. under Chavez to, to bring back a, a little of their gold. Um, we, have, we had our campaign starting out in 2011. Then we had Switzerland, more or less, at the same time. Uh, we have some auditing uh, efforts from the, the British people. Now Austria is a very hot top, uh, area. They are about to repatriate. The Netherlands have in 2014 now repatriated. We had Mexico already in 2011 or 12, a person called Mr. Barba. Um, he, he was a very early uh, activist, not yet successful, but he's now or also getting some traction again. <laughs> Just yesterday I saw him on uh, another uh, US news channel. Uh, we have France. Uh, the opposition leader, Marine Le Pen, a uh, very nationalistic figure, uh, is about to rep uh, demand repatriation. Belgium has repatriated. We have Poland, it Italy, Australia, Azerbaijan. These are all developments uh, from the last two or three years. And uh, this train is definitely about to, to start now. That's, that sounds awesome. I didn't realize that there were that there was that many Few people, few work. people are uh, not even here in Germany, and that's why I really, and I think I'm the first one to actually have them collected all. Uh, please wait for my book on this one. Yes, uh, if you don't mind, uh, Peter, give give that list of countries once again that is actually uh, looking to repatriate right now. Right now, yes. Um, well, yeah, it's, France, it's a bit, uh, Germany. I know, I know that. I know that uh, many countries have demanded, uh, many people from many countries have already demanded um, uh, transparency for many decades. But I, I started the list with Ron Paul's uh, initiative, uh, Audit the Fed, in 2009. And we had Venezuela in 2011. We had us in 2011, Germany. 
Switzerland, uh, 2011, 12. England started out in 2011. Austria, 2012, and still ongoing. The Netherlands, 2014. France, 14. Belgium, 14. Mexico, I'd say either 2011, but that was hardly visible then, but it's ongoing now. Poland, 13. Italy, Aust Australia, Savage, and that other was all in 2013. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if I got them all. Uh, wow. Because the book is not yet printed. Well, that's that's still, that's an unbelievable. Had Mexico is, you know, as as you are well aware, is our neighbor. I mean, right, it, just imagine a, a, gold, no a gold and silver friendly country as Mexico is storing its gold in at the Bank of England. That's <laughs> ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But that's what they do. <laughs> oh, well, let's change gears here real quick because we've got a very important vote coming up on Sunday with the Greeks uh, in Greece and the Syriza party it appears that they may actually win. And if they do, there's going to be some pretty big implications in light of what's happened, you know, with Switzerland just recently uh, unpegging from the euro. And what do you see as the implications of the Greeks leaving the euro and the impact, more importantly, on Germany's economy and the euro as a currency? There are a few angles to that question. Uh, well, the what I call real economy angle is Greece is not too important. They only have two or three percent of European GDP. Um, so one could say, just let them go, uh, let them leave the euro if they are not happy there, uh, which we should have done in 2010, yes. May, April 2010, when Greece already was uh, suffering under a too strong euro. They were not competitive any longer. Uh, and They had to be rescued by the European Union and uh, ECB already in 2010 uh, for the first time. In the, in the meantime, we have had three rescue packages for um, Greece. And no, not, not only Greece, uh, we have had so-called European Financial Stability Facility in 2010 with uh, the uh, European Stability Mechanism in 2012. Uh, that's all... Um, facilities uh, between 100 and 1,000 uh, billion euros. Uh, we have a few other so-called rescue mechanisms, and I'm positive that even if Syriza, the leftists, win, win in, uh, in this Sunday in Greece, uh, Greece will not be allowed to leave the euro, <laughs> um, <laughs> because not because Greece is so important, but uh, because of the signal that would send to the rest of the world Yes. Uh, the, the very the very next minute after the leaving of Greece, uh, Italian bonds, I believe, would fall like a stone. Nobody would uh, sell them any, uh, buy them anymore. Spain, France, exactly the same thing. And the only ultimate buyer left would be the European Central Bank itself, which is already buying, I believe, in between 40 or 80 percent of uh, newly emitted uh, bonds of those countries. Jeez. So. Um, I believe the European Union and Mr. Draghi, the boss there, has already announced the so-called OMT program. Uh, they are about to outright monetary transactions. They would, they are about to uh, buy basically all bonds that are not sellable or marketable in the open market. And this is really the bulk of it. Uh, European bonds, with the exception of a few of Germany and a few other countries. <laughs> uh, are managed in a, by the ECB like it is a centrally planned socialist agency, monetary agency. And this is already the case. And if Greece left, uh, I believe that process would uh, become uncontrollable, which it ultimately will become, but we're not yet there. So don't expect Greece to leave next Sunday. Okay. Uh, so, and that leads me to how are the, how do you think that, the, the Greek citizenry is going to react? That's a good question. I mean, the Greek, cit Greek citizens, on the one hand, are suffering the most. Uh, the euro is definitely too high for, for them to become competitive again. But this is a 15-year-old problem. When they joined the euro in 2001, uh, they were a little later than the others, uh, well, they could no longer devalue their currency, the drachme, as they did for decades before that. So that uh, mechanism to be to remain competitive is gone for 15, it has been for 15 years now, and you can't do that forever. There are so 
uncompetitive now. Uh, well, nobody has a job there anymore. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's really well, it's tough just, there. It's really yes. tough. On the other hand, uh, there's so much money flowing in from Brussels and from the European Central Bank in Frankfurt uh, into Greece that objectively the, Greece, the Greeks uh, are profiting from the euro still. And Syriza, the leftists, they know that. That's why I believe they're not, they're not even uh, trying to get out of the euro, they're just trying to get better credit conditions from the European community because uh, they are leftists. Uh, they li ultimately, they like the socialist uh, printing press from uh, uh, even though their own voters are suffering from that. So th th they will use their... Um, negotiation power with the European community and say we want even better credit conditions. Already Greece is refinancing itself on average by I think uh, bonds with 32 years of duration and they are paying extremely low interest rates given the status the, the country is in. They're paying single digit uh, interest rates which is ridiculous for a country with, with that credit risk. Do you, do you foresee an uprising? From the citizenry, because that's what I see. If they, if the yeah. uh, Syriza party sure. isn't voted well, in, they, they, they already are. There are permanent demonstrations in Athens. Uh, I'm not an expert on that, uh, but ultimately, this will be the determining factor how long the euro, euro system can last. Uh, people are suffering, uh, but it's not the Syriza leaders who will bring about the um, leaving the euro. It's really the people themselves. Okay. All right, and with the and the, the Swiss, you know, they depegged the other uh, just this past week from the euro. And yes. what impact do you see this? What what impact is this going to have on the euro and other currencies from your perspective? Result from this is a complete loss of credibility yes. uh, of the central banks worldwide because the Swiss national bank had defended uh, rhetorically that peg for three and a half years to the very last second, only two or three days before the uh, depegging, they still said we will use whatever whatever means uh, we have, we will, uh, whatever it costs, we will defend that peg. And two, two, two days later, uh, they abandoned it. I mean, that, that was official. That was in the American press too. Uh, Mr. Jordan, the boss of Swiss National Bank, got a lot of trouble there. But the mistake was not the depegging last Thursday. The mistake uh, was to, to start this uh, central planning currency policy uh, three and a half years ago. And the uh, Swiss National Bank president defended their position vehemently during the Swiss gold initiative. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, that that's, was, that's that important, too. Huge, huge. That's important, too. Uh, basically, he even officially said uh, one of our reasons uh, for uh, saying to our people, our Swiss people, uh, please say no for the Swiss repatriation, uh, gold repatriation initiative, is that we can no longer defend or uphold our um, Swiss franc peg. And this is important for our export industry and what, whatever he mentioned. Uh, yes. And only... Eight or nine, or maybe twelve weeks later, he's abandoning it, it uh, even <laughs> without the gold. Uh, so uh, this is a further blow to his uh, credibility. And yes. I have a feeling he's he will have to step down uh, any time this year, but we don't know. But yes. but it was not his fault. The fault was made by his predecessor in 2011. Uh, I actually applauded him for doing that uh, in my blog. <laughs> Oh, and one last thing I want to ask you about, Peter, then I'll let you get back to your uh, to your afternoon. How do you see this year being for gold? Is this going to be a good year? Is this going to, are we going to remain like we've been the last three years with the gold market? Or what mm -hmm. do you see happening with it? Well, I, I've been doing this gold business for more than 15 years now, and uh, I have become cautious making short-term predictions. But I would agree that... Uh, Fear is coming back into the markets. Uh, people and even the professional financial people are starting to realize that everything is artificial here. Everything depends on the um, central bank's ability to QE and to further QE and to QE 1000 uh, to even print more money. And uh, if, and we've just been talking about that, credibility of central banks is decreasing, yes. uh, then they are possibilities to further promote their false money, as I call it, paper money, credit money, 
fiat money uh, is decreasing too. And this automatically is positive for gold. Uh, in Europe, we have that very special situation that uh, the Eurozone has the Greek risk. It has the uh, Mediterranean risk in general. Um, so we had a good start in 2015 with the gold price. It was even better in euro terms, calculated in euros uh, for, our, for our own reasons here. Uh, I believe we will have a good year, uh, but it's going to be a, a very volatile year. The, the powers to be <laughs> of the central banks, they continue to defend their, their fake money. And, well, don't forget their ability to manipulate, and that's a different story, a long story, is, yes. is still there. It it's, is all still about there. it's all about confidence. That's why uh, websites like yours and, uh, and, yours. Our, and mine... Uh, we, we have to continue to tell the truth, the monetary truth, which means uh, automatically undermines the undeserved credibility the central banks still have. Yeah, they have. They are rapidly losing the narrative, oh. in my opinion, rapidly. And like you pointed out, with the uh, de-pegging, that was a huge blow to their credibility. And mm -hmm. we, we're seeing... You know, price, the, I call it the exchange rate for gold exploding all over the world, not in, not in U.S. dollars, but in uh, uh, pound sterling and in the, in the euro and the yen and the Russian ruble and the Indian rupee. I mean, it's just exploding. I mean, and that's what I see. That, that, that has already happened. Just look at yes. the gold price in rubles last year. Uh, I mean, it, it increased by... Almost a hundred percent. Yes, that, that's what that's what gold does. I mean, it that's doesn't do a lot. Does. It just remains, uh, and uh, that's a keep our the, purchasing power, and that's uh, that's all it's there for. Well, I, I won't take up any more of your time, uh, Peter. And we've been speaking with uh, Peter Berenger of GoldenSighton Blog dot com out of Germany, and he is the architect of the German repatriation movement and i greatly appreciate all your time today thank you very much for having me rory and looking forward to doing another talk uh, maybe later this year yes uh, i'll i'll ring you back in in uh, just a few weeks and we'll we'll catch up and see where we're at all right thank you very much well thank you for your for all your time